Good morning everyone. We're starting this morning a series of thoughts, morning thoughts, from the Epistle to the Hebrews. And I'm going to be reading from the New International Version and our thoughts will be on that, that basis. The chapter 1, verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. No one knows exactly who wrote this letter to the Hebrews, but the writer certainly knew these Hebrew Christians very well indeed. He knew his Old Testament and the recipients of the letter knew it too, and that made communication between them that much easier. It seems that they were Jews who spoke the Greek language. So when he quotes the Old Testament, he quotes from the Greek translation of the Old Testament. These Jewish people were under severe pressure. They had accepted Jesus as Messiah, promised in the Old Testament. And that meant that they were breaking links with their family and with their historic culture, something that was always very costly, as it opened them up to persecution, persecution from their Jewish family and, and friends, and from the Romans, who saw Christians as being subversive. So they faced a strong temptation to give up on their Christian faith. The writer's aim was to encourage them to remain faithful to Christ. And he starts off trying to demonstrate the glory and the supremacy of Jesus, God of God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We, of course, who call ourselves Christians, face an ever-growing anti-Christian culture, and that produces its own pressures on us. Sometimes we face opposition from friends and family, always the pressures of secularism and the perennial problem of our own doubts and fears, and not least with this terrible virus that brings fear, a lot of anxiety, and grave worry to a lot of people. These first verses set the tone for the whole letter. First, reminding us of how God spoke to the world in the Old Testament in different ways, in different epochs, in what he calls the past. God wanted to show the world what he is like. And then he tells us how God revealed himself to the world more fully and completely in what he calls these last days. And he did it, of course, by sending his own son. What he calls these last days are not just those days immediately before the end of time when we expect Jesus to return. They are all those centuries and millennia between the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and his final return as Saviour and Judge. This son of his, we're told, radiated God's glory. His Apostle John had declared previously that we have seen his glory. And then the writer says that this son of God 
is the exact representation of his being. The word representation was used to describe the stamp they used to mint coins. The stamp held an exact replica of the face of Caesar, and that was stamped on the coin. And that's why Jesus could say, he who has seen me has seen the Father. But the writer makes sure we grasp not only who Jesus is, but also what he has done. And he's an amazing person. He is creator. Through the Son, God made the universe. He's sustainer. He keeps creation running by his powerful word. He is redeemer. He purified us from our sin. He is king. He now sits at God's right hand in heaven. This is our great God. And these Jewish Christians needed to hear that again and again. With him as their God, what need had they of anything or anyone else? Why succumb to the temptation to cease to believe in him? Where else will you find love like that of Jesus? Where else will you find such a powerful Lord, someone who can rule your life and guide your decisions rightly? In him we trust. Shall we pray? We thank you that this Lord Jesus Christ is our God. Give us grace to trust in his mighty power and his constant love. Give us your strength to resist any and all temptations to renounce our faith and doubt your word. Give us your wisdom to obey you in all that we do today that we may honour you with our life and witness. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen.